Hey, this episode is with Aaron Sprinkle. And I'll say right off the bat that looking back through this footage with Luke, um, I learned a lot about um, myself and how I act in the world from the things that Aaron and I talked about. And personally, if I can come out of one of these episodes and that is um, something that shows itself to me, that's a win. Um, Aaron was really candid and um, it's not too often when um, you find someone who is as candid about his own uh, blunders and um, triumphs in his life as Aaron was in this, uh, in this uh, episode. It was righteous. And um, so I'm excited for you to see it. Um, I think it's like 30, maybe 40 minutes long. It goes, it goes, it goes pretty good. Um, also want to say thanks again for watching our videos. And uh, we do it when we can. Um, considering the events of the past year, we just, we're keeping up, you know, as much as we can. Um, it's a labor of love right now. Um, and with that said, um, we're going to start a Patreon and we're asking for, um, $5 a month. And, um, if you'd like to be a part of that and you'd like to contribute to what we're doing here and, um, um, help us continue doing this, um, we would, we would graciously receive your, um, sponsorship. So with the, we only have one tier, $5. Um, and as we go, we'll, we'll see if we can, um, we'll see if we can get more tiers going as, as time and energy allows us to. Um, Luke suggested that we, uh, release to you, um, the Patreon members for $5 a month, some bonus content of stuff that we've cut from previous episodes. Um, I know there was a lot of uh, questions about the Julian Baker episode. Um, I know Josh Scoggin had some uh, cute stuff to talk about. Um, and um, there's some other other content in there that we, we, we chose to um, omit that we would release to you. Um, and as we go, you know, we'll have different things available to you for that. $5 a month, one tier. Um, we'll have the link in here. And um, yeah, again, grateful for this. Um, we have the next episode we have coming up is a live episode that we did in, in, uh, July. Um, and that's fun to watch too. So hope you all are doing all right out there and I hope you're all, you're even doing good or well. Um, yeah, have a good one. Enjoy this. See ya. Hey, uh, this is Make It Perfect. I'm Ryan Rado. I'm here. We are here with our friend Aaron Sprinkle. I can't even believe it. I uh, have enjoyed the work that he's done for decades. Um, first with Poor Old Lou, and then uh, with the Rose Blossom Punch, and uh, his solo work and different records that he's produced. And I'm really happy that you're here, Ian. Oh, heck thanks. yeah! So we're gonna get some paint. I'm excited. Heck yeah! We're gonna get some paint, some tools. And uh, what are you gonna make, Aaron? Tell everybody. No idea. <laughs> Me neither. No I clue. I get that every time. <clears throat> so you were mentioning that you started running mm -hmm. and you quit caffeine. Yeah. How did you quit caffeine? Because I would love to know. Well, I I've quit mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. in my life, somewhat successfully. Yes. <laughs> That's reasonable. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm sort of in that. I'm in. A, I guess I'm kind of in a period of like <coughs> enjoying <coughs> challenges that oh, cool. that that uh, go against the narrative that I've had of myself, which is, I you know, I could never blank. I could never be someone that blanks. Awesome. 
and trying to disprove those. Cool, man. So when I'm driving down the road, I've been known to slam my vehicle into park on the highway. What is happening here, man? This is phallic as hell. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I'm working it out, man. I just need to do this. I'm rolling with it. Do. There we go. So, Aaron, you you compose for Soundstripe. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been doing that? Two years this month. Well, what do you think? You, are you, I mean, well, nothing incriminating, but are, is it overall a good experience? Oh, yeah. Great, it's dude. Just the best. That's cool, man. Are you producing at all? Yeah, a little bit. Nice. What's the latest thing you worked on? Um, trying to finish an acceptance album that nice. we've been working on for three, almost three years. Sick. Now. <laughs> it will get done this month. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Take a look at where you've been and how you've come so far. No Painting with my heart. There it is. Uh, what's been on your heart lately that you can articulate in words? What do you got? Well, the usual thing, you know, pain is the usual thing. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, I know it well. Uh, seriously, <laughs> it's no joke. Yeah, I don't, I mean. It's no joke. I don't think that's. Oh, man. What it, what it, uh, uh, do you mind me asking, like, what types of things get you to a spot where it's hard to see past them? Like, like what do you deal with in that realm? <sighs> wow. That is, that is good. Um, well, you know, mm -hmm. with you, it's kind of like the mm -hmm. the concept of pain or mm -hmm. suffering mm -hmm. being inherently bad mm -hmm. is the most destructive thing in my life. Oh, agreed. Oh, yes, agree. Because the, all the all the all the really damage I've done to myself mm -hmm. and others is in the act of trying to avoid pain or escape pain. That's addiction. Yeah. Oh, dude. So. God, that is so good to hear. So, like, suffering is the quintessential human experience, and it's necessary yep. for life. And yep. Where I was somehow, I'm not going to blame anybody, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but led to believe that. We should avoid it at all costs. Why? Because it's hard. Because it's it's because it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it, it's even potentially evil yeah, to entertain absolutely. those things. Absolutely, it's a it's a warning sign that that Hell. sin is at present or whatever. You know what I mean? So <laughs> unreal. Um, which is literally not no. even if you believe even if you believe like mm -hmm. inherently believe in scripture that's mm -hmm. not even scripturally sound no. right there's so much pain it's very, in there it's just american is what it is american oh, but um it's deadly in a way yeah or modern or whatever you yeah. want to call it but so i'm just i'm trying to like mm -hmm. get to that point where i can maybe look at pain i'm not good at this but look sure. at pain as possibly even something to look forward to because it really actually is a catalyst for growth. Yeah, dude. Right? It's like a gift almost. So, you know. That's a big statement and I'm glad you made it, man, because it, it, it feels true to me anyway. Dude, I'm fucking serious, but, man. Well, yeah, and except like, ex mm -hmm. the only thing we can actually do or I shouldn't say we. The, mm -hmm. the only thing I can do, mm -hmm. literally the only thing I can do is accept. That's it. That's all I can actually do. God, man. So it's the only power I have Straight is to up. accept, yeah. right? <laughs> Other than that, I'm pretty much powerless when it comes God, to anything man. else. Man. And that's like, that's that notion of surrender. It's like, yeah. it, 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 and that is a terrifying thing to accept. Yeah. You know, I was just hanging, man, that's so good to hear, dude. Like <clears throat> avoiding, avoiding big emotions in general or being taught to avoid them because they're potentially, well, they're dangerous. I mean, they are. Yeah. So why would you avoid, why would you avoid that kind of danger? Mm -hmm. But like you said, avoiding that kind of danger, it almost trans, it, it trans, it transfers the danger outward. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
and, and it's really tough to feel those huge emotions, man, straight up. How do you do it? Well, I guess self-reflection is one good way. How have I created my own circumstances, you know? God damn. Yeah, well, and then, so, I also mm -hmm. have this thing where I think that the, the sign of me being content or successful or happy or good mm. is that everything's going exactly how I want it to. So yep. that, that's what that would look like, right? right? But that is the worst way to look at life. I agree. That you could buy, I agree. Because all you're going to look at is deficit. You're going to look at what you don't have, what you're not doing, what you're not achieving or thinking or any of that. Yep. So, and it makes me inherently in, entitled because I believe that I deserve or get to or at least have the opportunity to achieve that stuff mm -hmm. but in reality what I should be doing is is focusing on accepting what is because mm -hmm. that's all I really can do sure mm -hmm. and that will it's there's there's a book that I really like mm -hmm. called yeah. the subtle art of not giving a fuck oh, yeah, read that book, that, but yeah. he talks about how lo seeking out happiness is 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 a negative experience mm. and accepting what is and accepting pain and looking at that as just being a normal part of life is an is an inherently positive experience. It's, it's so, the way to that surrender and proverbial happy, happiness, you know. Yeah. And then you've got to define what is happiness. Just look. Yeah, looking yeah. at what is hap like looking for happiness in general is just a really negative yeah, thing. Dude. So uh, and that goes against sort of what I would think would be like instinct. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that. Because you want to minimize your suffering in general, yeah. you know. But I'm so entitled, so I just, because I'm so entitled, I'm mm -hmm. constantly thinking about how I feel about myself and how do I feel and what's yeah. happening to me and how mm -hmm. I feel. And, you know, like a lot of artist mm -hmm. people, I am mm -hmm. very focused on myself and my <laughs> experience of my yep. feelings and mm -hmm. how are my, but how, there, how is what's happening affecting how I mm -hmm. feel, you know. And there's room for that. You know, well, like of course, the, yeah, for sure, there has to. But be. It, when it becomes like pathological and you just you're just myopic all the time, it's yep. like to grow Which I've, up. I, that's what I, I'm I saying am. To my so, same, same, bro, same. <laughs> and that's a huge problem in my life. It's not something that gives me real any benefit anymore. Mm. Maybe it, it served its purpose at some point. See, that's a killer statement. To but make. it does not anymore. I I, I become I become a, a I just become really. Uh, validation seeking and, mm -hmm. um, and when I'm in that I don't realize that I'm projecting my I, I'm projecting my feelings on other people and like but I'm getting better at noticing that so thank you God Dude, that's all you know? that is like the that's like my entire problem is just sure if someone isn't validating me then I think they think I'm a piece of shit God what is that where what? okay so where that, that I feel like that is put that is instilled from maybe like a, I mean, I'm, I'll just say like a parental figure and then, and then it's like, it's their search for validation is paradoxically expressed onto you. Like they're projecting their insufficiencies yeah. onto you. And then it's, it's interesting how it, it just manifests throughout yeah. your life, you know? Yeah, and fi and like healing that and recognizing it, self reflection. Like, I, I, and I'm not talking about self refer uh, self being self referential. I'm talking yes. about like, how did I create my own bullshit? Yeah, and that's hard, man. That's yeah. really hard. Have you? When, when did? Can you recall when that started for you? Because I feel like it, it it happens a lot, but then all of a sudden it's like it's like okay, I'm self reflecting for real. And if, uh, I, if I need to answer, I'll no, ask no, no. it a different way. Okay, no. gotcha. Offhand, gotcha. I would yep. say two, there's two kind of monumental moments in my mm -hmm. life, two of which have happened more than once. Cool. But, um, <laughs> I love it. Is getting sober. Awesome. And then my deconstruction of my faith. I got it. Obviously a huge, mm -hmm. a huge one for me as well. Which one I, do you want to talk about And first? I'm just sort of, I'm using mm -hmm. the term deconstruction because mm -hmm. it's easy to kind of give it a label that yep. way. But, you know. I People think we should all, do that. We all have a different journey, you know, different experience with that and a different Definitely. end that we get to with that, and that's fine. Mm. But I'm happy to talk about either one of those things. Let's talk about the addiction first. Can we take a break? Damn it, Luke. Sure. I 
am a textbook mm -hmm. alcoholic. Got it. What a thing to just say. Beautiful. Just beautiful. As, as purest as you can get. Mm. I, I never, I haven't really even done drugs at all. Great. I just Great. drank enough for everybody. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a great thing to say. Yeah. So that's, you know, that when, was something hmm? late to you. I was late, late to oh, it. Oh, like uh, what age did it start? 20s, wow, mid yeah. 20s maybe. It's sure. when it really became, I didn't drink my, I didn't have my first drink until my 21st birthday. Wow, dude. And I didn't even finish it. It was a beer that I didn't finish. <laughs> what kind was it? It was a good beer. Nice. Some, you know, micro mm -hmm. Seattle microbrew thing. Did you feel bad about no. drinking? Oh. Just like in the beginning even? No, okay, I, cool. it was just on my radar zero. Like cool. absolutely yeah. just, it wasn't like a thing where I was like, I definitely, if someone would have been like, do you think it would be a good idea for you to drink? I would have been, no, 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 that's bad or a sin or whatever. Totally, yep. But it wasn't something I was like try, trying really hard to not do yeah, yeah, or like, yeah trying to keep out of the way of, mm -hmm. it just didn't present itself. Sure, sure. And I, I didn't really have an appeal. It, it wasn't something I fantasized about or anything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In any kind of capacity until mm -hmm. I would say my late teens, I did start to sort of romanticize it from mm -hmm. just a, I don't know what, just, you know, it's romanticized. For sure, definitely. Um, did, but it, I, but mm -hmm. I was also, I kind of romanticized self-destruction and pain and all that anyway. Yep. I mean, uh, you yep. know, it, there, you there's know, something. Like, the Cure is my favorite band, so. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. excellent. Of course. Okay. And there's something just freeing, seemingly freeing in that. Yeah. And ultra cathartic. Yep, ultra cathartic, ah, melancholy. Yes. Uh, mm. Free, grown up, whatever. Oh, that's a good wanna, term. Wow. Whatever you want, like normal even, yeah. you know. But you know, it, um, mm -hmm. uh, you hear this a lot in, in the rooms of recovery, but you know, I, I never felt, <gasps> I always felt out of place. I always felt like uh, Like all the time. Yeah, like okay. there was some, you know, there was something, there was a meeting mm -hmm. in the room I just walked into before I walked into it that I wasn't invited to. Oh know? yeah, right. Like the and what general, were they talking about? Yeah, the yeah, general right. sense of how oh, I felt. Oh man, oh man. Uh, since I was, since I can remember, God, since I was a young a, person, I felt that way. And, uh, that's a cool way to articulate that, man. But, uh, and so when I first started drinking mm -hmm. enough to, to get drunk or, you know, the, it made me feel how I thought everyone else felt all the time. Oh, wow. So was, was and, being, uh, it made me feel normal. On the road, did that was that that fast hurry up and wait lifestyle? Did that propel you into drinking more? No. Oh, okay. Awesome. 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 You know, it was it, it always was a it was always like a very. I mean, it was it's it was social at first for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. There was kind of a bunch of us that were grew up in church and youth yes. group and that kind of were late bloomers with like the partying thing, sure. you know? Yeah. So we yeah. were like in yeah. our twenties, kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of doing it for the first oh. time. And, and you knew a little bit more than like, like, I don't know, 18 or something, you know? Yeah, or, maybe. Yeah, maybe there you go. Yeah, that's great. That but, great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, but it was, all, it, it was, you know, I'm not good at um, mm -hmm. moderation of anything, so. <laughs> Um, it felt good. I felt, I felt better. Mm -hmm. And if it, if that feels so good, why wouldn't you just always want to feel Do it that all way? the time? Yeah. Totally, man. Hey, I'm not arguing. And it, it, <laughs> it, it took, it took years to, to get to be where it was like, you know, I had, I had like the classic, like, uh, where everybody sits down and talks to you. Oh, intervention. And I had an intervention. You <clears throat> got it. <clears throat> hey, that's great. And, uh, who initiated when, that? My wife initiated Got it. it for sure. Yes. But, awesome, um, dude. Oh, nice. But I went, you know, and I ended up doing like a, a, uh, an outpatient treatment. Cool. Uh, I didn't want to do inpatient. Mm -hmm. That seemed uh, a little too intense. I just, 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I still was, it's, it's pretty common, I think, but at, that, at mm -hmm. that point, I still was like, the only problem is that this is a problem to everyone else. Okay. That's yep. the only actual sure. problem. So I went into recovery with the mindset of not even really wanting to quit. I didn't mm -hmm. really, I don't want to quit. I just didn't want God, the consequences a, anymore. You know what I mean? So well, that's a great statement to make, dude. Wow. So, and you know, it's mm -hmm. my journey has been long. Sure. I, I don't, I, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been in and out of recovery mm -hmm. about four times as long as I have that I, as I have sobriety right Fine. now. So yeah, totally uh, cool. it's been a yeah. long journey and it's sure. been a, a journey of relapses and, sure. and, yeah. and all that stuff a lot actually. But mm, um, mm, mm. where are you now? I have a year right now. Right here. Yeah, I just got a year last month. It's badass. It's the third time I've got a year. Excellent, dude. <laughs> Excellent. So I've never picked up two years before. Though, dude, so. I, ho I, I hope it continues, man. Thank you. It, but yeah. it, it's the same thing we were talking about earlier yeah. that it comes down to is, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. lack of power, lack of control, um, acceptance. Yep. Um, what is it that I'm even trying to do? Am I trying to avoid pain? Mm. Or can I see pain as a beautiful human experience and something that I am actually privileged to get mm. to experience? Yeah. You know, and of course I believe this a lot more intellectually than I do emotionally at this yeah, point in my life. Yeah, makes sense, man. But um, sure, sure. Yeah. So, and you know, honestly, mm, like, mm, mm. really honestly, like, mm -hmm. uh, one, you know, I've had some friends <clears throat> ask me like, what, what feels different this time? Oh, cool. And um, so I'm a part of, mm -hmm. of a recovery group that, mm -hmm. you know, is a spiritually, it's spiritually based, yep, yep. but it, it is not Christ. Christian. Yeah. Right? sounds great. So, yep. um, it, that was always a big hang up for me in the past because mm -hmm. I tried to fit my really narrow view of spirituality, which was this very specific yes. evangelical yeah. thing and, and it didn't fit. Right. So I would have to kind of leave some Man, of, that of that because God. I couldn't fit it in to that yeah so yeah. now that I'm not in that headspace anymore right. I'm able yeah. to take all of it in cool so yeah. it's real it's a really neat experience it's, yeah. it it that group and those people that is my church community that is church to me yes that's church yeah. I never got that out of church ever like I never did and what? I grew up my dad was a pastor and everything like sure. I grew up in church so what I is what is that thing you never got out of church that I, I want to zero it's in on very that. simple okay I I never wanted to be at church. I just knew uh, yeah, I, I totally just knew yeah. I was supposed to be. I wanted to talk to girls. <laughs> I, 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 I knew that I should want to be there and yep. I never did. Yeah. And so it felt empty and wrong yeah. and like I was bad. It was just this inherent, like, you know, negative deficit. Because mm -hmm. I would be there. This is the place that you're supposed to feel the most joy and feel the most hmm. you know, at one connected, time. the yeah. most like, in place, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I didn't ever feel that mm. way. So you I felt only just felt worse yeah. about myself when I was there. Right. And so, Damn. this place that I go now, yeah. I can't wait to go there. Cool. Yeah. They're cool. my family. I'm so excited to be there. I can be myself more yeah. than any other place, which yeah. is the opposite of church. I yeah. always felt like I had to be. And you know, I'm not. Mm. Again, I'm not trying to blame any culture or pe person, but. I don't see that. For me, yeah. dual, duality is a prescription for mm -hmm. addiction, right? So, because if I mm. feel like I have to be this way one mm -hmm. place and this way another place, it, it, it's like it polarizes those two Big things time. and they get extreme. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's my story anyway. I that's, mean, man, I think I relate to that too. Do you, Luke? It's beautiful, dude. That yeah. really is, Aaron. Like, I got chills just hearing you talk uh, about it. That's, awesome. that's so cool. It's beautiful. The thing you said about not wanting to be at church, generally, I never want to go to church. Yeah. And then it's like, well, if you don't, if you don't have pure thoughts about all of everything, okay, first, what is pure? And if you don't, if you don't have like church aligned thoughts with your experience, then there's something wrong with you. Well, yeah, there's things wrong with us, but it's like, is there something wrong with us because of the way that you're laying out this structure and the expectations of how you think every unique human personality should act. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like, <clears throat> just give us, give us, a, give us all a minute. You know what I mean? And, and it's really like, it's really fast and urgent that you make up your mind, you know? And I, I, 
I think those the duality in the black and white decisions happen in that, and then you make decisions that you don't feel yep. are okay. 100%, yeah. It's fucked, man. It's, it, this decisions that I f feel like I should make mm -hmm. are the worst decisions I've yeah. ever made in my whole life. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's a quote, dude. Boom, <laughs> dude. I love that. Oh, yeah. On both sides of the spectrum. Sure. Uh, Frick. Frick. Frick is, Fuck. Frick's a word we need to bring back. <laughs> Frick's a big one. I really man. like Frick. Oh my God. Mother Fricker. Mother, f mother Mama Licker. Mama oh, and also that uh, feeling absent when you're at church. I was hanging out with Jordan House, a good friend of mine who's mm -hmm. a brilliant human being. And uh, he's, a, he's a psychotherapist in Nashville. And, and um, we were hanging out this morning and he said, he was talking about the concept of an absence in your life and like, um, but there is a presence, that absence is a presence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you're in church and you feel yes. an absence, yeah. you're feeling the presence of that absence, yes, you know? And I was like, dude, yeah, totally. Yeah. And that becomes real, you know? Yeah, that's, oh, that's huge. It's intense. Yeah. It's. I'm gonna change this up, bruh. The, What's that? Yeah, the Go ahead. focus of, this might get more into the deconstruction Let's thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. The, 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 ugh, mm -hmm. this, this is something I've never said on Let's record. Let's do it. So, Try ho it. Hopefully, hopefully my parents don't watch this. Got it. Got um, it. <laughs> so look right into the, the wind the and in, say it. <laughs> the in, the, there's an inherent problem with the gospel that I was taught as a child. Yep, yep, yep. For me. Yep, sure. I'm not going to judge anybody else great. that feels yep, that way. Yep. But it's that God is all about grace. Mm -hmm. Jesus died because of grace. It's only grace. Works. You know, that's legalism. I was raised in like a rural West Coast evangelical thing. So it's real anti-legalism. So free. Just grace, 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 grace. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything to change how God thinks of you. Right. You can't do anything to earn your way into heaven. Mm -hmm. But if you don't say or think or believe or do this one specific thing, mm. then you'll be tortured consciously forever. So those two things don't go together that at all. Subversive. Right? Yeah. They're just the most opposite My things. My God. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So that is at the core of right. all of the things that are fucked up about me. <laughs> that, so that's like, excellent what i think that's like the the, the foundation yeah, upon yeah, which yeah, yeah. all of my problems rest what a thing to identify yeah you know what i mean yeah so how do you how do you move from that what do you you said accept yeah it's about like okay then because mm -hmm. there's so much that's built on that right sure there's like this culture of it doesn't really matter what happens here because mm. someday when we die and we're all dead and there's going to probably be a place somewhere mm -hmm. that we're all going to be forever. Mm -hmm. So like, this doesn't yeah. really matter. Copy. It's like so an that's illusion. like the worst thing you can also teach someone, right? <laughs> it's like what this life is doesn't really matter mm -hmm. except for this little prayer or thought or belief or whatever. Mm. that's very specific. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that matters here. God, man. And so you want to create OC Dizzle. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's start a band called OCDC. I was talking to Maddie about that. Me, you, and Maddie started a band OCDC. called OCDC. That's in Cody Bonnet because he thought of that shit. Anyway, go ahead. It's pretty cool. It's a band of superstars um, right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. Anyway. So yeah, there's yeah. this huge polarization mm -hmm. between what you're taught to uh, sort of portray from a grace standpoint. Right. But then if you actually look at the actual logistics of what you believe. Ain't happening. Yeah, it's not happening. So that to me is a culture of look one way, think another. Ah, and seem unaffected. Yeah. So I was <sighs> taught that how you look and how people perceive you is the most important thing. Oh, wow. Because of that. That's borderline personality disorder, you know, <laughs> like that. Well, so maybe not, but. Again, I'm not, per I'm not trying to personally blame yeah my parents right, or right. anything. You're talking about your experience. I'm just talking about my personal experience yep. in the society and in the circumstances that I grew up in. That's how um, it came across for sure. And the way my brain took it, you know, how literal <laughs> my brain took it. You know, I've had 
anxiety and fear about you know end times kind of World right. War Three stuff since I can remember think, laying at night thinking about that stuff thinking about hell and heaven and if I'm going there or not and mm. and I have tra I have PTSD like trauma for from sure that, man you know yeah. well think um, you come into it indoctrinated uh, that's a hot term you're introduced as a child when things are literal mm -hmm. and you're trying to talk about things that are metaphorical mm -hmm. And, but they're kind of literal. How do you process that as a child? Yeah, and especially when the basis of the basis of the faith that I was grow, grew up in was that the reason this is true is because it's true. It's uh, the only real. This verse means this, right? And, and it's true. No and other it happened, and it and it has to mean this. Otherwise, what are we believing in? Oh, if it isn't just man. this empirical, factual, yeah. historical statement. Then there's no basis of any like sure. validity or depth or reason for it to exist. Right, right. And you know, mm. I read that uh, book uh, called uh, "Zealot" by Reza mm, Aslan, mm, mm, and it's, yeah. it's 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 a good book. Mm. I, I mean, I don't know how much of it you know. Fine, I yeah. can take factually, but sure. the thing that he said that I loved is he said something happening historically doesn't make it not doesn't if it did or didn't happen historically mm -hmm. it doesn't give it more or less weight yeah that's, there's, there's, that's it can have yeah. just as much weight yeah. whether it's a metaphor yeah, or a, an allegory yeah. or a story totally. or a parable or as a mm -hmm. you know but but there's this culture of like no this is the thing that actually happened mm -hmm. if you went in a time machine and went back you would see this happen mm -hmm. moses or whoever would do, do this, and that would happen, and you'd see it happen. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a burning bush, and that would be burned. Right. And there's no, there's no room for any metaphorical. No, there's that. no room it's for a, anything outside of that. Man. And that, 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 that really rigidity tough. is so, it's not a good, I don't believe that's how it God created us to, yeah. to, to thrive yeah. in this body and in this place. Right. One way. Yeah. It's yeah. all about mm. the, the unfolding of creation that's constantly yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. The, the renewal and destruction and yep. birth and death and archetypal happening stories all around yeah, us and that we get to be a part of yep. and experience and so it's like, the, it's like the unfolding of consciousness exactly. all the time man that's beautiful so it changes the whole like point right. for me like because I to thought what? the point yeah, yeah let's go well I thought the point was to mm -hmm. to go to heaven because that's what right? they taught me whether for they sure. want it whether they want to admit that or not. Yeah. They taught me that the only thing that really matters is if I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, that's kind Good of luck. crazy when Don't you put it that way. Don't make any mistakes. Yeah. But you can make mistakes, <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. But now I can try to start okay. being, yep. thinking about mm -hmm. if... Listening. So, you know, part of the deconstruction is, mm -hmm. okay, if that's mm -hmm. not true, then... What is? Then everything's fucked. Oh, Nothing matters. God, so. man. But oh, it could also God. be maybe I could try, you know, to do, uh, I could see if I could do less harm today than I did yesterday. Oh, I like that. Hey, that's one thing. Sounds doable. Yeah. Yeah. Or I could try to be useful to people. That'd be cool. Mm, mm. I could try to not only think about myself all of the time sure. and how I'm experiencing whatever's going yeah. on around me. Mm. So those are things I'm working on that I'm really bad at, <laughs> but I'm working on them. Hey, and dude. It's cool to even say it, dude. You know? Yeah. It takes a lot to even say well, that. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be here thinking about, like, values, mm -hmm. for instance. Yeah. It's a worthy thought process. Uh, if, I w if I hadn't gone through all the stuff I've gone through. Um, so is it almost like pain? It's like we, we think horizontally a lot of times, but pain kind of is a vertical thing. It's almost like goes down. And, it, and what produces, to me, what produces the self-reflection is the raw look at how you've created your own pain. Absolutely. God, man, it's so the, the, righteous. The, the worst so things righteous. that are the, are the most difficult or painful things in my life are the things that make me the most useful to other people. Damn, so. dude. Man, it's so it's so beautiful to, to be able to experience these things and, and just shitty while you're in them. But like you said, being being like grateful for the pain, man. It's like 
I'm it's, trying. That's a really hard thing to do, but I, I'm good to hear it. I mean, I'm glad to hear it, you know? Right. And when can you move away from the pain and, and just like invite that, that greater consciousness into your into your being you know well, it comes so now like mm -hmm. those moments for me are, mm. are not chased anymore they come naturally like oh more, that's awesome more than they used to oh know? i love hearing that like chasing that is what gets me into trouble right so yeah like we talked about yeah for yeah. sure man man because chasing you're at, you feel like you're actively doing something and when you're just letting it come, it's almost, it's, it feels counterintuitive, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I have to produce, I have to move, and rightfully so, yeah. maybe you do, but it's like, just letting things happen a little bit, man, that's tough, dude. Yeah. It's tough, man. Dude, I feel like I'm in Seattle rain vibes, you know what I mean? Yeah, I Heck just. Yeah. You turned it, did you turn it? No. Awesome, awesome. I just didn't want it to be so symmetrical. Cool, so. yeah. I yeah. just started doing some angles, and then I was like, oh, that feels like rain. Very cool. Mm. The rain in my soul. Yeah, dude, let's hear more of it. <laughs> When's the last time you were out, uh, out in Seattle? Uh, in uh, July. Oh, okay. We did the, uh, or was it end of July? Yeah, I think it was the end of July. We did the Rose Blossom Punch oh, sick. reunion show. Mm. How was it? It was really fun. I bet. We, it was. It was the. I bet. Too. It was crazy. <laughs> like I was so nervous about it, kind of at first, sure. but then I, like, I wasn't. I kind of like got. I, I was less than normal, I would say. But cool. Yeah. I did. We did a. We opened with a set that was. It was like. Mm -hmm. Five Aaron Sprinkle solo songs yep. with a band, and mm -hmm. then. Maybe five or six fair song oh wow cool yeah and then That's we took right. a break and then we did a full rose blossom punch it's a lot bro yeah. holy mackerel and then the the opener was that this that band subways on the sun that nick barber from portal Lou and fair and rose blossom punch is in mm -hmm. and eric from fair is the singer okay okay so cool. it was just a big family thing basically That's great, like man. oh What is what? Hey, dude. Dude, we're in here, dude. Oh, anyway. Hey, uh, Lems, these shoes we got. Luke has them. Aaron does not have them, but he may have Aaron them at some point. Them. Aaron wants them. You hear that, Lems? <laughs> and we got another shot over They're there. They're so sick. They're pretty killer, you know? Hell yeah. <laughs> so we've sold our soul to Lems, gladly. And, uh, really dig their shoes maybe you you might like them you can uh, check them out at their website search lem shoes uh, they're probably the they're the most comfortable shoes i've ever worn and uh they're not cheap <laughs> but you get what you pay for <laughs> yeah you do you know <laughs> thanks aaron <laughs> yeah. oh man they're really great for like outdoorsy kind yeah, of yeah for sure man. And stuff yep and if you want to go on a little like day hike, it's a perfect kind of shoe for it. Mountains and stuff. Yeah. Dude, these are, I love wearing these every day and I feel like, I feel cooler wearing them. Audrey, you hear me? Thank you very much. Appreciate that, by the way. What up? I'm down in a basement somewhere getting weird. Um, got this guy. Hmm. He's bummed. It is a bummer anytime you put a cone on a dog. There's just so much shame in their eyes, you know? He's got some skin issues and uh, just had to do that for him and put the sulfur medicine on his skin so he gets better. He'll be better. Um, Jerry's Autorama in East Nashville is reopening after they got obliterated by the um, tornado earlier this year. Um, they'll be open end of November. December 2020. So whatever you're working on, go in there when they reopen and um, they do framing there too. And they have whatever you need for whatever project you're working on. And if you don't know how to use something, you can ask them and they'll tell you how to use it. They're pretty nice. Party on, party on, party on, party on. Kingdom come, thy will be done. Jerry's Artorama, feels like heaven. Well, you went and saw corn recently with your dad, right, Luke? That's tight as hell. That's awesome. was fun. How was it? It was great. It was cool. super cool. I mean, just, was it packed? Yeah, and I, I went. We went to the Birmingham show. Yeah, it was outdoors, yeah. Mm -hmm. and 
you know, imagine the type of people that are at this. Thing. What kind of people, Luke? Let's hear it. What kind of people are at the, the corn show? The nicest, show? most beautiful. There you go. Absolutely. In the Alabama. People. people you've ever seen. Corn has the most, just, just the sweetest fans. Yeah, there. dude. And uh, it's a great time. <laughs> That's cool. Did it? What's some of your favorite corn songs, Luke? Um, well, of course you gotta love the classic "Freak on a Leash." Leak on a Freak. I remember. I remember one time I was listening Leak. to that at Walmart. <laughs> yep. And I was trying to go get some dog food, and there's an old <laughs> lady next this? to me, and it, it was right as I got to the part with the where he does the the whatever it is, the, his scatting thing. Oh, you know, what? Right. yeah, right. That shit's killer. Oh yeah. And so mm-hmm. I had it cranked mm-hmm. in my headphones. And I'm next to this old lady, and I'm not thinking one thing about it. Right. <laughs> and I'm getting my dog food, and I look up, and she's just kind of looking at me. You know? <laughs> Were you oh scared? No. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't doing nothing. Did she hear I, you? Or she she can hear it? heard it. Yeah. I had it cranked in my headphones. You know, she needs to loosen like, up. What is she listening to? <laughs> I get really into Christmas cookies, and I was buying huh? stuff. Where was I buying it? The la- I was. I think I was buying some sprinkles, and she just thought it was so funny because oh, she saw my name on the card. What do you think about your last name, Aaron? What do you got? Do you ever? I mean, when you were a kid, were, they, were people fucking with you a little bit, or was it like? Always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got radio. God, made me cry, dude. Yeah, I got it. really. It. It was. I hated my last name until. I can kind of remember the first time I realized it, that I didn't hate it. Was it mm-hmm. just was so funny? There was this guy named Sam that went to. A, he was kind of in our youth group, but he was older, and he was this like that was me. metal guy. <laughs> yeah. He was, had the curly like tinted hair. And yeah, he's, yeah. He was awesome. Cool, dude. cool, cool. But when he first found out what my last name was, he asked me if it was my stage name. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I was like, oh, maybe Thanks, it's Sam. cool. Yes, definitely. <laughs> That's sweet. He's like Sprinkle. Is that your stage name? <laughs> Hell yes, <yeah>, Sam. <laughs> That's awesome. We need to find him. I know. Make him some damn cookies. Thanks, Sam. Sam, thank you, dude. That's cool. Well, hey, uh, this has been Make It Perfect. Had a just stellar blessing of a time with our friend Aaron Sprinkle. And uh, Aaron, how do you feel? Good. 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 Yeah. Very cool. I had fun. Good. I Making a yep. mediocre painting. Hey, man. It's about the process, <laughs> you know? I'm... Well, I, 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 I'm, what am I, I'm stuttering, I'm stammering. I want to call attention to your tattoo on the left side of your neck and this. Oh. It, it, I looked over and I looked at your neck, I'm like, no shit, dude. And oh, whether or I didn't not even think about that. the Ouroboros. Literally never thought about awesome, it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And, and maybe it's not, maybe it's, you know. Well, I, I actually. We were talking about stuff like that though. I've you been, know? yeah, I'm really into the that whole yes myth thought story and, yeah yeah concept. it never changes yep yeah dude definitely. that's cool that was my own uh feeling on that obviously i thought it was i really love cool. that heck yeah very cool well hey um thanks again and uh yes aaron sprinkle i feel like we had a great time what do we do now luke i have like six or eight monikers that I compose under on Soundstripe and there's tons of it on there and uh, I'm working on a new solo record that'll be out this year at some point. Cool man. Mm. What's your, the Instagram you have, what's that? Aaron Sprinkle. Just Aaron Sprinkle, got it. Totally cool. Uh, Make it, every time, make it perfect show on Instagram. Make it perfect show at gmail.com. Has anyone emailed us? Yeah, yeah Franico's. Uh, I did. You, yeah, Aaron did too. That's, that's right. How, that's that's right. how I asked you if I could come on your show. It was so righteous. What did, what did he say? He, he said, said, hey, in the subject yeah. line, and then he said something along the lines of, I would like to formally invite myself. Yeah, I, I said I would like to formally invite myself. To I be love on that. Your show. God, that's so good. I wish more people would do that. I loved it. I, when it was I saw so that good. pop up, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks again for watching our show. Um, if you make it till the end of this, we're gonna be starting to sell these paintings that we make on these show, on, on our shows um, with the consent of the guest um, to kind of help us keep doing these shows. You so, can sell mine for 10 grand, I'm fine with it. Yep, that. 10 grand, you hear it? Ready to go. You got that kind of money? 
You got that's that kind of money? That's the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You got that kind of money? Oh, that's good. Aaron, that was fucking radical, dude.